Right. All right. This, this is, is the call to order of the, of the, of the New Bern Historic, Historic Preservation Commission, Commission. and, and welcome, welcome to all who are using remote meeting, meeting methods, methods, channel, channel three, 3, the city's, the city's Facebook, Facebook page, the city's, the city's website, website newburnnc.gov, all, all small letters. letters. And, and we are doing this meeting tonight uh, through, through media, through Zoom. Through Zoom. And, and there, there will, will be some, some individuals who are going to be joining us through so Zoom. Zoom. Some, 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 some of the commissioners, commissioners are joining us that way. way. We do, we do have, have a few people out in our audience who are going to be here in person. In person. So, so everyone who's, who's involved, involved, please be patient as we work our way through, through this process. process. And, and tonight, tonight we're going to get it uh, straightened out. And so tomorrow night we'll just zoom right on through the Zoom meeting. Okay. If we can if we have, can have a, a, roll a roll call of commissioners to ensure that a quorum is present. Certainly. Um, Chair, Chair Ruth Cox. Present. present. Vice, Vice Chair, Chair Tripp Urey. Here. 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 James, James Bisbee. Bisbee. Here. Here. George, George Brake. Here. Peggy Broadway. Peggy Broadway. Here. Christian, Christian Evans. Evans. Here. Joseph, Joseph Klotz. Klotz. Apparently not, not yet here. here. Ellen Sheridan. Here. James O. Woods, Jr. Jr. Here. So, so we have a quorum. Thank you, Thank you sir. sir. Next, Next would, be would be the reading, reading of the minutes, but we have, we have none this month. So we'll, so we'll dispense with that. With that. The Historic, the Historic Preservation, Preservation Commission is a public commission appointed, appointed by the city of New Bern, Port of Alderman. It is, it is responsible for preserving and safeguarding New Bern's locally designated historic districts, downtown and Riverside. Based on U.S. Department of Interior standards, state statutes, city ordinance, and New Bern historic guidelines. Two of the major tasks of the HPC, including approving applications for a certificate of appropriateness and preventing demolition of historic structures due to neglect. The HPC holds a quasi-judicial hearing on an application for a certificate of appropriateness. The commission hears sworn testimony and evidence provided by the applicant by, by parties, parties who receive notice, notice of, the of the hearing and by, and by others, others who can justify that they, that they have, have relevant, relevant evidence and legal, and legal standing. standing. The commission, the commission cannot consider comments based, based on personal, personal likes or dislikes, hearsay, hearsay or personal, personal opinion, opinion that cannot be directly, be directly related to a specific historic, historic guideline. guideline. Likewise, Likewise, commissioner shall refrain from stating, from stating personal, personal opinion, personal likes, personal or, likes or dislikes, or hearsay, or hearsay during a hearing. The commission's, commission's decision, decision on application is based solely on testimony and, and evidence presenting at a hearing that relate, directly relates to historic guidelines. guidelines. Anyone, Anyone who intends to speak or provide testimony to the COA application, application on this meeting, meeting agenda, agenda, agenda must, must be sworn, sworn in, in to make, to make, to make comments. comments. We will, we will swear, swear in, in the people who are attending the meeting remotely uh, when, when they, they appear for their hearing. hearing. We will, we will swear, swear in those who are in our audience that are present, uh, they will be sworn in by the HCC administrator. And we will attempt to do this as a group. With social distancing, you don't need to come up. <laughs> All right, so you need to raise your hand. And you need to swear to tell the truth that that's for your knowledge. Okay, we'll go around the room. Please get your names on the video. I mean, on audio. I'll talk to you. Sylvia Rappenbach. Hugh Burrellson. Rachel Hall. Thank you. Here's, Here's a short summary, summary of how we will generally conduct a COA application. Due to our present setting, 
Everyone, Everyone must introduce themselves before speaking, speaking and, and do this every, every time, time that you speak, speak and what and application, application you're speaking, speaking to so that, that, that the people, people watching know who you are. are. The HCC administrator provides an overview of the application. The applicant representative presents the application. Proponents and opponents who receive notice of the hearing can present evidence. Rebuttal, Rebuttal is allowed by applicant and by, and by proponents and opponents who receive the notice. notice. Others, Others who can who justify, justify that they have relevant, have relevant information, information and legal, and legal standing, standing can present, present evidence. evidence. The HC administrator presents the staff's findings and their recommendations. The applicant and rep our representative has an opportunity to make, to make final comments on their application. Commissioners, Commissioners discuss, discuss the evidence, evidence and may, and may ask, ask for clarification from the, from the applicant or the presenters. presenters. The chairman, the chairman calls, calls for a motion to approve or deny the application, application with stated findings of fact. fact. The motion, the motion is, is discussed by the commission. The chairman, the chairman calls, calls for a vote, vote on, the on the motion by the, the commission. A COA can, can be approved. approved. Approved with conditions or denied. Can we go to the first application? Certainly. Uh, we will start with uh, 613 Broad Street. Hold on. I'll go ahead and do the introduction and then uh, we'll bring you in. Okay, so the first application, 613 Broad Street. Uh, this is an overview of the application itself. Uh, and let's see, the application includes approving landscape design and fencing, lamp posts as depicted on attached, signed and dated, and there's a written uh, uh, description of the work. However, items one and two. Uh, were actually uh, handled with a minor work uh, COA. So this application is only using numbers three and four of the application, restoration building of historic fence and approval of a landscape design and planning plan. So this is a black and white version of the plan. I will move to a color one later. Uh, this is a historic photograph from the, uh, I guess, Civil War era for this house. You can see, among other things, uh, the white fence along this, which is part of the proposal for today. And then Exhibit 5 is, this, is that large plan, which I now have to... There we go. Uh, that's the full page. Oops. And that's now a color version. And then this is a, a zoom in on the top half of that. I'm actually going to move this to a scrolling method. There we go. So um, you can see now in color the extent of the landscaping, which you've probably reviewed and we reviewed previously several months ago in the design review meeting. Uh, this is then the bottom half of that plan. And we can go back and we can uh, talk about any individual uh, or particular general items that you would like. Okay, so now we have to zoom back into the entire page again. And move over. Uh, and down. There we go. So, um, I think a little smaller. There we go. And this is a representation of the uh, applicant's photo representing the proposed fencing. And then the applicant has also provided supplemental information about the uh, gas uh, um, street light fixtures and the handrails here. So the uh, they mentioned the guidelines that are appropriate, uh, 2.3.6, and, 
and for the handrail 4.7 the lamp post will be seven foot nine inch smooth steel post black with two piece wrap around pedestal base with gas line inside and the handrail wrought iron five foot long and two inches wide with mounting brackets welded six inches from each end of the handrail's curled end uh, i read those because these are new uh, submissions of information last week then this is the zoning and inspection review form and you can see that the uh, project meets the land use ordinance and will not require a building permit and then we have our usual recommendations here below i will move this back up to the actual plan which sorry i will have to reduce again there we go, so that uh, we can go ahead with uh, further discussion. All right, that concludes my summary of the application. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Do any of the members have any conflict of interest? Do any of the members of the administrator have any issues with application completeness? Okay. So, so the representative of the center would like to uh, speak, speak and uh, she is she already been sworn in, 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 but if but you will, will say your name, name again, again, please, ma'am. Yes, my name is Rachel Hall. This is yes, come on over here. We'll get you on camera. There you go. Yes, my name is Rachel Hall, and um, I've, I've been, been here before and discussed, discussed the plan, and I'm happy, happy to answer any questions. questions. We're, We're using indigenous plants for trying to return the landscape as closely as possible and as positively as possible to the Civil War. Not here, a photograph. Removing the ivy from the brick wall because it's just destroying it. Um, but, um, but in other, other respects, respects, we will try to return it to where it was, but, but add indigenous and more decorative planting with, with flowers, and, and so it won't overgrow again. again. It, it, the overgrowth is tremendous, and we have to be careful. We have since learned, learned since I was there that a lot of the plants they um, chose have creeping roots that love sewer systems, and so we've had a lot of fun with that. And so none of these will have similar problems if we try to maintain them a bit better. So, any questions? Okay. If, if not, not uh, is there any is there any money, money from, from, any, from any, any notified, notified proponents, proponents of, of this application? I see I none of the audience. Do we have, we have any, any on my line who wants to, want to speak? Hearing, Hearing none. none. Is there, is there any, any testimony, testimony from, from a from notified, notified opponent, opponent of this plan, plan from the audience? audience? Do we, Do have, we have anyone online who would, who would like, like to speak as an opponent of this application? Madam Chair, we had no one registered for online participation for this application. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. So, so I'm not, not going to go through, through the rebuttals, rebuttals, rebuttals because we, we don't, we don't have, have any at this point in time. time. Is there, is there any, any comments, comments from, from anyone, anyone with, with relevant, relevant evidence and, and has standing in the, in the audience? audience? Is, there is there anyone, anyone online? No. no. Okay. So, so if, if, sir, you will provide uh, staff findings, findings and recommendations for this application. Certainly. One second. Sorry. 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 Certainly. One second. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here we go. Okay. The application is uh, the applicants are William H. Cobb and Rachel B. Hall. The applicants. Project address is 613 Broad Street. It is known as the William Hollister House, built in 1840 to 1841. It is a contributing structure in the historic district. 
according to the National Register Inventory of 2003, which describes it as a federal Greek revival style, two and a half stories, three bays wide, exposed face chimneys on each side, one story wing on the west side and a gable end roof. There's also a description in the Sandbeck uh, book from 1988, uh, and I have excerpted the portion, it was quite a long por uh, description, I excer excerpted the portion regarding the anything regarding the exterior of the building, landscape, or other uh, similar to the landscaping. Uh, let's see, then the actual project application is to include nearly complete removal of existing landscaping and replacement with landscaping according to the submitted plan for the preliminary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs. The plan includes installation of one or more gas street lights and new wood fencing. So we submit the following historic district guidelines as appropriate to this application. Utilities 2.3.1, landscaping 2.4.3 and 2.4.4, fences and garden walls 2.5.1 through 2.5.3, modifications 3.2.1, masonry 5.1.1, 5.1.2 and 5.1.4, wood 5.2.2, metals 5.3.3, paint 5.4.2 and 5.4.3. Statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, one, the project is site work within the primary, secondary and tertiary ABCs. The proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly, and the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So the staff recommends as a motion, the commission approve this application to include nearly complete removal of existing landscaping and replacement according to the submitted plans with landscaping, new wood fencing, new lighting, and metal handrails, all in the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs citing the aforementioned guidelines. Thank you, Thank you sir. Is there, is there any, any evidence, evidence of testimony, testimony from, from any state, state city, city or government, or government body, body who is, who is out, out in our audience? audience. There, is there is no, no one online, online either, either, sir? That's correct. Okay. okay. So, so uh, would the would applicant, applicant like, like to make a final, final comment now? Comment now. No, thank you. Okay. okay. So, so I call, I call now for discussion, discussion among the members, members of the commission, of the commission and, and if you, if you will state your name, name as you make any comments or ask, or any, ask questions. any questions. Well, I'll go okay, first while well, everybody's sleeping, but I want to thank the applicant for uh, submitting what appears to be a very complete application. Um, I think we saw this in design review three or four months ago. I only have a couple of questions, um, and I'm not sure when you'll get the opportunity to respond, so we'll wait to see how Madam Chair wants to handle that. But my two questions are, are there any substantive changes from what you presented at the design review? And I'm getting the nod no. And then my other question, um, we cover wood and metal in uh, our recommendations in your application. Are there any other materials that would be contemporary, for instance, that might be part of the project? There are no artificial materials in the landscape design. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, do any of you have any, any comments or questions you'd like to make at this point? Here we go. I will ask for a motion to approve or deny the CAA. Whoever calls for the motion, please state your name. Madam Chair, James Woods, I move that we, excuse me, find an application for a certificate of appropriateness for, oh, I just had the address, 613 Broad Street. Be in not congruence with New Bern Code Ordinance Section 154111 through 15429 and the New Bern Historical District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. Utilities 2.3.1, landscaping 2.4.3 to 2.4.4, 4. 
fences and garden walls, 2.5.1 to 2.5.3. Modifications, 3.2.1, masonry, 5.1.1 through 5.1.4. Wood, 5.2.2. Metals, 5.3.3. Paint, 5.4.2 to 5.4.3. Findings of fact: The project is state is the project is the project is site work within the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs. Two, the proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Three, the zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and com committed accordingly. Commented accordingly. Four. The project is not in congruence with the guidelines. Thank you, Thank you sir. sir. Do, I Do I have a second for this and please give your name? Christian Evans. Okay. Second. All right. All right. So, so do we have any discussion on the motion that's, that's been made? Hearing, hearing none. none. I call I for a vote on the motion and we'll have to do the roll call by vote. All those, All those in favor? favor? Uh, Tripp? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bisbee? Oh, uh, Jim, you need to unmute if you're going to uh, say something. There you go. Yes. George Brake? Yes. Peggy Broadway? Yes. Christian Evans? Yes. Joseph Klotz, he's not, is he in yet? No. He's on screen, he's here. Oh, Joe Klotz? Yes. Oh, there you are. Uh, Ellen Sheridan? Yes. And James O. Woods, Jr.? Yes. Yeah. And then Ruth Cox? Yes, sir. Okay. So the motion passes, as all members have passed this uh, uh, application. So, I call for a motion to issue a COA on the condition that no written comments by persons with legal standing are received within 24 hours of the approval of the application. If any such comments are received within that time period, the vote on issuing the COA shall be continued to the next HPC meeting. So do I have a motion to issue a COA? And if so, please state your name. I move, Joe Klotz. Second, James Woods. Please state your name. Second, James Woods. All those in favor? And do we need to do this by roll call? Again? Yes, we do. Okay, we'll do this by roll call. Trip Uri? Yes. James Bisbee? Yes. George Brake? Yes. Peggy Broadway? Yes. Christian Evans? Yes. Joseph Klotz? Yes. Ellen Sheridan? Yes. James Wood Jr.? Yes. And then Ruth Cox? Yes. So all members have voted yes for this, so a COA can be uh, administered with the, with the caveat that of the 24 hours that we're going to have to uh, listen to if there's anything that we receive in that period of time. And ma'am, we thank you very much for taking on the duty of this house, and uh, we know that it will be beautiful when you get all of this done. So we thank you very much. You're certainly welcome. We appreciate your detail to your drawing of this house and all the trees and plants and railing that's going to go into it. Right. <laughs> okay, I started to say, because there's a time period that this should... Okay. Okay. Do what? To come on over here. Oh. We're aware of the time and for installation, and okay. we'll be back if we're unable to complete it in that time. It is it's our goal, goal to do that, that but, but, but we, we have had a lot of fun in the last two years building this, and sometimes, and sometimes our budget, budget is not as grand as our ideas. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. okay.
So can we go to item B, 100 East Front Street? Yes, one moment. 100 East Front Street, also known as, sorry, AKA 210 East Front Street. <laughs> That's what got me confused. Yeah. So the application is here with uh, relevant information filled in and signed at the bottom and dated. This is a representation of the site plan. I uh, should maybe make this larger full size because it doesn't show the entire park section there. So, um, yes, even smaller would be better. There we go. You can see the gazebo at the corner of the park at the bottom and then the large grassy area in the middle and then the proposed location of the stage is at the top here. Uh, the front of the stage faces the large grassy area and there you'll see in a second in a larger plan that there are uh, two small steps on the left and the right towards the front of the stage and there's also a ramp and sidewalk along the back side of the stage out to the parking space uh, here or the paved area on the left. So that better not be a problem. Okay, so uh, now I can make it a little bit larger again. This is a section and side view of the stage. Uh, so it's primarily uh, masonry uh, base to it uh, with uh, white steel columns and a green standing seam roof. Uh, the front of the stage is uh, 12 feet above the stage surface. The stage surface is 30 inches off the ground. Um, and the depth of the stage is 30 feet. And the back of the stage is eight feet off of the surface of the stage. So this is now a plan, which I'll now have to make smaller. Well. Maybe we'll first start with, um, we're only looking at a portion of the stage here, or of the plan, sorry. So this is the, the plan view. Uh, you can see the two um, side um, uh, little stairs steps on the left and the right, and then the ramp on the back. The uh, uh, landing is in the upper right-hand corner and, this, and the ramp ramps down to another landing at the other corner on the left. Um, and then the actual width of the stage is 40 feet. Um, these are some sections. This shows the uh, handrail at the steps, typical. Also shows a section through the uh, side of the uh, stage where it shows a uh, concrete block structure, but uh, faced with brick and the actual stage itself is a slab concrete and all on uh, compacted fill uh, underneath the slab. And this is just a detail of the ramp uh, being a slab that ramps down along the side of the stage. Um, so this is a photograph of the old former stage and this is a photograph, I should make it smaller, of the proposed location for the new stage. Um, you can see the, this is where the flagpoles are and some landscaping and it will go in front of that basically in this uh, lawn area right here. Then uh, we did receive well, let me finish. Uh, uh, the applicant brought with him today a flash drive with additional information, which is uh, allowed for them to do at the last minute. And so you'll have to give me a second to pull that up. While you're looking at that wonderful view of the river. Yeah. Uh, let's see.
Okay, the PowerPoint presentation. In a minute, I'll share that with you. Here we go. So going to that, there you go. And let's see, will it work? There we go, okay. So, um, oh, all right, sorry. Uh, okay, maybe it's on the main drive. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> that looks better, right? Okay. And we will be sharing this as soon as I can make that work. Stage. Okay. There we go. And there we go, right? Okay, so the roof construction, yellow pine tongue and groove decking with green standing seam roofing and a concealed fastener system. Steel columns, uh, apparently similar to the um, gazebo. and the stair and walkway handrails to be welded and fabricated on site using one and a half inch round steel tubing and coated with dark green epoxy paint to match the gazebo handrails. The stage lighting is LED seal ceiling mount, 20 watts. Brick accent lighting to consist of five watt LED landscape step lighting in a bronze finish. And that was it, correct? Okay. All right, so I will go back to the rest of the application at this point. All right. And we did receive uh, a written uh, response from one of the neighbors uh, that received notice. The Zoning and inspection review is also here. Oh, sorry, and it indicates that it does meet the land use ordinance and will require a building permit. And then we have our recommendations prepared. Okay. Any of the commissioners have any conflict of interest with this project? Hearing none, any of the commissioners or the administrator have any issues on application completeness? Hearing none, would the applicant like to present the application and sir, please uh, state your name. You've already been sworn in. Hello, Foster Hughes, Director of Parks and Recreation for the City of Newburgh. So the reason we are, are we're doing this is uh, our original stage was a wooden structure that was destroyed during Hurricane Florence. Our goal is to go back in a different location, which is more conducive to larger crowds at Union Point Park. Uh, we did our summer concert series the past few years in the same general location. It's been very well received. This stage, uh, we're excited about it. If it is approved, it would have a, um, a roof structure. Um, there would not be any overwhelming lights. The lights you saw. Uh, in the PowerPoint a few minutes ago, um, just enough light to basically uh, let the bands and whoever else is using the stage get on and get off the stage. Um, any bands normally bring their own portable lighting for, for a light show. But I'm happy to answer any other questions that, uh, that the board may have. So, is there any testimony from any notified proponents of this application? who are here with us today. Are there any online? Madam Chair, we, uh, we did not have any uh, registered pro or con or otherwise online for this project. Okay. I thought when you went through your thing that you had a, a letter from some person. 
Yes, they provided a written comment uh, and uh, they're not online and they're not here. Okay, all right. So um, I would call for a rebuttal from those individuals, but we don't have any. So um, is there anyone in the audience uh, with relevant evidence and has standing who would like to present? And you said there's no one who's registered online to present any. That's correct. Okay. Um, sir, could you give us uh, your findings and your recommendations? Definitely. Again, bear with me. Okay, so this is the application for the City of New Bern, uh, Foster Hughes, Director of Parks and Recreation at 100 East Front Street, also known as Union Point Park. Uh, it is a vacant lot as far as the status, historic status is concerned, uh, and the National Register inventory description for that, and they give it, the address is 200 East Front Street. Uh, it's a landscape park at the confluence of the Neuse and Trent Rivers and site of early settlement of New, New Bern. So the application, oh, sorry, I can make this larger. Is to include replacing the destroyed stage with a new stage using a new design and a new location. And staff submits the following historic district guidelines as appropriate to this application. Accessory structures, if you so deem it as an accessory structure, it's um, potentially debatable. Uh, but if so, it's 2.6.3. Uh, waterfront modifications would be 2.9.4, and design principles is 3.1.5. Uh, the statements of reason, based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, one, the project site does not include a primary structure. Two, the stage will be concrete, steel, and wood construction with standing seam metal roofing. Three, the zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And four, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So the motion that staff recommends is the commission to approve this application to include replacing the destroyed stage with a new stage using a new design in a new location, citing the aforementioned guidelines. And we had um, the condition suggested the following before beginning construction provide detailed information about the roofing material and construction the steel columns the stair handrails and lighting so they've provided some of that if that is to your satisfaction or not uh, you can still determine that thank you sir is there any evidence and testimony from any state, city, or government body that we have in our audience? Seeing none, I understand there is none online. So would the applicant like to make any final comments, sir? No. Okay. So I call for a discussion among uh, the members of the commission at this point in time. And if you will state your name as you ask a question or make a comment. Jim Bisbee, my question is, it, th that roof, it, though it's standing seam, appeared to be corrugated in the picture. Is that accurate? You need to come up again, because you have to get very close to this microphone. Foster okay. Hughes with the city of Newburn. Um, it is a standing seam roof. There, there appeared to be ripples, though, between the standing seams. The standing seam roof that we're going to put on here is going to be the exact same, exactly identical as what is it at uh, Union Point Park currently with the gazebo, and there is a there is a ripple where the panels connect. But the connect. picture that you saw of that was flat, except for where the seams meet. Okay, Jim, would you like me to um, bring that picture back up, please? That's not the right one. Come on. 
I'm going to get rid of that. <laughs> there we go. Hold on, I have to share it. There we go. Hughes with the city of Newburn. Yep. Um, yes, there are two ripples in between the standing seam. That is an inaccurate example of the roof. My staff pulled that together for me, and, and I, I missed that. But it would be a flat. Roof okay. With no ripples in between the okay. seams. Thank you. Do we have other commissioners like, that would like to ask questions? Yes, Peggy Broadway. Uh, please recognize that this is um, in Peggy, no way. Peggy, can you speak up a little bit? We can hardly hear you. Let's try it. Um, this is in no way to suggest that um, Mr. Hughes has uh, presented anything false. I think he's the best thing that's happened to Newburn since the invented of the Pepsi. However, <laughs> Uh, I have some problems. We have an unusual situation here. This is not a private property. You can't decide it when you say the gazebo is not, it has no uh, primary um, buildings. You can't ignore the gazebo. It was of a 19th century um, design. It's been the very focal point of the park since it was built. It has served as a place for musicians, the Marines band performed there. And if you're gonna call this an accessory building, accessory buildings have, are supposed to be tertiary and we don't have a tertiary. Uh, this is all primary. It's a public park. It's not, it's not like a person's house where you can hide a building behind the building, behind the main dwelling. And if you pull up a picture on page number seven, you've already shown it one time that this building is going to be 14 and a half feet high when you put it up on the, uh, the uh, foundation. And if you look at the picture that you had earlier that showed a shot across a lot, and it's hard to call it a lot because it's not a lot, it's a city park. And if you look at the tree in the background, you can get an idea of how much of the view it's going to obstruct. Um, the people that live in New Bern, first of all, did not get notification. It, it was attempted, they did not get it because the notification only had to go out to 100 feet of, of the building up the site and we have rivers on the east and the south we have the convention center on the west and we have a hotel on the north so um they did not get notification and um i really i have no objection to the building being on its original site because it was perfect there in that it did not actually block the the access of the river because you've got parking lots on both sides and on the east side and um, nobody can get down to the river from there anyway unless they climb off the wall so i don't have any problem with it on the original site I would not have any problem with it if it were going to be at Lawson Creek Park. And, um, but I do have a problem with it distracting with this particular site. When you come from Newburn, I wrote from Bridgeton, and that's the first thing you see. That is the welcoming site for Newburn. I'm a little bit surprised that the Appearance Commission did not get this thing, but I guess because of COVID, they could not. And um, because it really should be seen by the Appearance Commission. Um, that area, 
the, to the north of the gazebo is used by people to kick a ball around. They put their blankets out there. They have little family picnics, whatever. And, and if we take the gazebo off of the original site, then we're, which would actually offer a larger lawn to put chairs and blankets or whatever to hear, hear the, um, the bands perform, um, it's, no, there's no problem. It, and it's near the bathrooms, they're located well. So um, I really have, have some concerns that we're moving this thing through so quickly without a lot of public opinion and because they didn't get it out. And um, wasn't because he didn't try, we, we just didn't get out. And um, so, as I say, I don't have a problem with the structure. He put it on the original site. I do have a problem. That's the, that's the one screen I'm talking about, Matt. Because if you look at that screen and see how tall it is, this, this structure is what, I grew up in the country, and we would call this a lean-to. It's a big lean-to, and you used it much a tobacco barn to keep the fire going under the tobacco to cure it. So that, that said, I don't think it's appropriate to be on this side. I think it distracts from the main focus of the park, which is the gazebo. And um, that's basically my concern. Thank you. Do we have any, any other comments from the commissioners? Yes, Christian Evans with Peggy's comment about the lo new location of this new um, for this replacement of the stage, what was wrong with the uh, original spot where the other um, other stage was? Is the new stage larger than the old stage was? Why are we moving it to a new location? I'm sorry. Foster Hughes, City of New Bern. The proposed new stage is actually smaller than the old stage. The other one was a lot wider, almost 60 feet wide. Mm -hmm. um, the location it was in was not ended up not being very conducive for concerts. We had complaints from from homeowners that were located on South Front Street with the, the noise. When we moved our concert to the other location, it worked out better. So that is the city preference to keep it where we are proposing to have it. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other comments or questions from any commissioners? Uh, Peggy Roswell, uh, did you give any consideration of Lawson Creek? Just before the flood hit us, they were planning or discussing making the walkway from the palace all the way over to Lawson Creek. And you have plenty of room at Lawson Creek. You've moved the fireworks over there, which works fine. And that would certainly take care of the noise in the historic district. And um, there's a lot there's more parking than we have uh, down near Union Point. Did any consideration be given to Lawson Creek far? Uh, Foster Hughes, City Foster. of Newburn. Um, just to let you know, we do have the River Walk. Question from Foster Hughes. Any, any consideration given to Lawson Creek? This is Foster Hughes with the City of Newburn. Um, to address your first comment, the River Walk currently extends all the way to Lawson Creek Park. Uh, back in November, the city added across 1,500 linear feet of river walk behind the Newburn Towers area for that connectivity. We currently have an area for several stages at Lawson Creek Park, um, and that is for large concerts. We have no plans to, to put a covered uh, amphitheater at that location. Any other question or comment, Peggy? Uh, no. Okay. Any other James commissioners Woods. got a comment or a question? Yes, James Woods, a uh, question for Matt and Foster. On the uh, construction materials, 
some of it was met, however, for the um, staircase, the stair rails, the railings, is that a tubular type railing going to be used, Frosted? Yes, sir. It's tubular and it's similar to the handrails, the rollerblade on the on the walkway at the gazebo at Union Point Park. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments any commissioner would like to make at this time? One more question, Peggy Broadway. Uh, if this falls under the accessory building and the requirement for the accessory infill is that you need to be able to easily remove the building and replace it with all that concrete. Can that be done, Foster? To easily remove this structure? No, it yes. is being built as a permanent structure. Yeah. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, so I call for a motion related to the COA and the person who's given the motion, if you would state your name. Madam Chair, George Brake. I move that we find the application for 100 East Front Street or a strictly appropriate for 100 East Front Street to be not incongruous with Newburn's Code of Ordinance, sections 15-411 to 15-429, Newburn's Historic District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. Applicable guidelines, accessory structures 2.6.3, waterfront modifications 2.9.4, design principles 3.1.5, Findings of fact, the project site does not include a primary instruction. The stage will be concrete, steel, and wood construction with standing seam metal roofing. The zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commit, commented accordingly. And the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. I would like to attach the following condition. Before beginning construction, provide detailed information about the roofing material and construction the steel columns, the stair handrails, and lighting. Thank you, sir. Can I have a second on the motion? And if you would state your name, please. Yes, okay. So let us uh, call for uh, any, any more discussion on this item. Hearing none, let us call for a vote on the motion. All those in favor, roll call by person. Yes. 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 Yes, and Matt, would you uh, turn your uh, microphone on? Let me start over. <laughs> uh, Trip Urey. Yes. James Bisbee. Yes. George Brake. Yes. Peggy Broadway. No. Christian Evans. Yes. Joe Klotz. Yes. Helen Sheridan. Yes. James Woods. Yes. Oh, and Ruth Cox. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. So all of the commissioners except for one have uh, approved uh, this COA. So the COA will pass. That's correct. So I'm going to call for a motion to issue uh, a COA on the condition no written comments by persons with legal standing are received with any, within 24 hours of the approval of the application. If any such comments are received within that time period, the vote on, it, on issuing the COA shall be continued to the next HPC meeting. So let me call um, for a motion 
to issue the COA. All of those in favor, we'll do it by roll call. Madam Chair, this is James Woods. I move that we issue a COA. Thank you. Roll call, second. I question, I thought George put a condition on the, on the application. Do you have to recognize that in that motion? Yes, sir. There is a, con a, a condition that went along with the, with the motion. Well, the, the condition that I heard you put on was the, was the usual one of no more public con uh, comment, but I thought George put another one on about uh, supplying some details of the, uh, the materials used. Yes, sir. That was that was when we voted um, on the COA. That was in that that we voted for. Did we not? Okay. It was in the it was in the first one. Okay. Now we're so that but so that that is present. So now okay. we're voting to to issue the COA with that. With uh, that, it, it has Understood. been approved. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 So we have uh, a motion. James, did you make the motion, sir? Yes. Yes, I did, okay. ma'am. All right, so we have to keep doing it by roll call. And, and you, I'm sorry. So all of those in favor, James has made the motion. And just to be clear, uh, Joe Klotz also seconded that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. So roll, roll call, all in favor. Um, so Trip Yuri? Yes. James Bisbee? Yes. George Brake? Yes. Peggy Broadway? No. Christian Evans. Yes. Joseph Klotz. Yes. Ellen Sheridan. Yes. And James Woods. Yes. Ruth Cox. Yes. So all the commissioners uh, have approved this except for one. Uh, the vote passes. So, sir, you can have your COA. Thank you very much for improving our city parks here in the town. Okay. So let us next go to the next item, 715 East Front Street. Can you tell us about that, sir? Yes. Am I on mute? I can't tell at the moment. No, you're not. Okay. So, uh, seven fifteen East Front. Uh, here's the application, um, and it, the information is provided, signed, and dated. Uh, they also have a signed uh, representative for the owner to be Shannon Kaur. Uh and let's see, that is signed and notarized. Uh, this is a description of the work that was in your packet and a more detail, that was a summary and this is a more detailed description. So, oh, gosh, that signed by uh, Shannon Kaur's uh, partner in the project. And this is now a larger Construction drawing showing the details for the, the piers that are added to the project inside the house and then also along the perimeter of the house um, to accomplish the raising the house from the inside. Then other drawings, I'm sorry, I zipped through that. I need to change this to a different mode. <clears throat> there we go. So this uh, being uh, the roof plan. This is the foundation plan. This is the framing plan. Uh, this is actually the original certificate of appropriateness, which was issued back in July of 2019 um, for the original um, um, proposal, which was to elevate the home by the usual method, which is to uh, prop it up uh, and uh, put some new foundation work underneath it. You can kind of see it here in this image. Um, and also in this illustration here. 
So however, uh, once the contractors were on board and got started, it was discovered that that was no longer possible or not no longer, but not possible because of the construction of the structure being all concrete block and uh, on a slab uh, that elevating it the normal way would destroy it. So uh, the attempt now is to elevate just the floor and all of the insides of the house up uh, several feet, uh, which necessitates removing the roof in order to get the ceiling to uh, also elevate as well. So this is uh, the current state of the uh, structure and we'll make this a little bit smaller. So you, just to see some of the details, uh, we have details of the windows and it looks like we have to go even smaller. There we go. Uh, the corners of the buildings are rounded. The uh, corners of the window openings are rounded. Um, so those are all elements of the historic character of the structure, the brick sills. Um, so, and uh, the windows have been removed, but they've been uh, stored and will be reinstalled uh, in the new openings. So now we have to get back to the rest of the application. And that's a very big view of the very bottom of the house. Um, let's see, here we go. So here we have the- I can hear you, Matt. I'm sorry, am I on mute? Or am I just not talking loud enough? Is that better? Yes. I can hear you. Okay, sorry. So now this is the um, zoning and inspections form, which indicates uh, that it does meet the land use ordinance and will require a building permit. And then we have our uh, findings and recommendations available when you're ready. Y'all, this is the project Oh, from which I am constantly recused, so I'm going to recuse myself. Okay. All right, you, uh, you'll have to announce who you are when you speak. That was Ellen. <laughs> Ellen Sheridan, who's located way too close to this project to be unbiased. So I'm going to recuse myself as I have in the past. Okay. And we'll, we'll get the conflicts of interest here in just a minute. Okay. okay. Any other information you want to give Matt? No, not at this point. Okay. So now we're to members with conflict of interest. And that would you be you, Ellen? Indeed. Okay. Madam Chair, Trip Ewer, I need to report ex parte communications with Shannon Core. He's a, a part owner of the construction company involved. Uh, the nature of my communications had to do with interpretation of guidelines uh, that related to the project, as well as some guidance as to how um, I might recommend Shannon go about trying to correct his issues. So. I don't believe those communications affect my ability to hear this case. Thank you, sir. Any other conflict of interest at this point in time? Okay, any members or administrator have any issues on the application's completeness? So I believe we have to vote for Ellen to be uh, removed from the uh, panel at this time. Yes, Madam <laughs> Chair, James Woods. I move that Commissioner Sheridan be allowed to step aside for this vote. Okay, all of those in favor, we'll do it by roll call. Do we need a second we on need that? A second. Christian second. Evans, second. We have, we have a second. second. Hi, Christian. So, all of those in favor, we'll do it by roll call. Okay, all in favor, uh, Trip Uri? Yes. James Bisbee? Yes. George Brake. Yes. Peggy Broadway. 
Yes. yes. Christian Evans? Yes. Joseph Klotz? Yes. James O. Woods? Yes. Ruth Cox? Yes. So the motion passed. So, Candy, uh, does the applicant want to make a presentation at this point in time? So does that mean, no, you don't? Okay, all right. So the applicant has uh, no comments. And sir, could you state your name? Could you come up here and state your name and that you have no comments? My name is Shannon Poor. I have no comment right now. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any notified proponents or opponents to this project that you've received any information from, sir? There are none for this project. Okay, so that will go through the rebuttal. We don't, we won't have any of that. Uh, so are there any comments from anyone with relevant evidence and has standing in the audience? No, and we have none that you have received, sir. There are, there are, there's no one registered for online participation with this okay. particular project. Okay, so sir, if you can provide staff findings and recommendations. Okay. So this is the project for Rosalie and Richard McDevitt. Um, also, uh, Mr. Hugh Vernelson, Jr. for the project address of 715 East Front Street. It's also known as the Bengal House from circa 1950. It is uh, considered a contributing resource in the historic district. The project is 715 East Front Street to revise the approved COA for this project to allow for elevating the interior of the house while the exterior walls remain. Exterior wall height is added to the top of the walls. The window and door, am I, am I on mute? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, sir. <laughs> the window and door thresholds, sills, jams, and headers are modified, and the roof structure and chimney are removed and replaced. This is an after the fact application. So staff submits the following historic district guidelines as appropriate to this application. Utilities 2.3.1, 2.3.2, landscaping 2.4.3, parking 2.7.4, modifications 3.2.1 through 3.2.4, foundations 4.1.4, walls trim and ornamentation 4.2.1, 4.2.4, Windows, doors, and openings, 4.3.1, 4.3.3. Entrances, 4.4.4. Roofs, 4.5.1 through 4.5.3. Decks and patios, 4.6.2, 4.6.3. Masonry, 5.1.1 through 5.1.3. Wood, 5.2.1, 5.2.2. Metals, 5.3.1 through 5.3.2. Paint 5.4.1 through 5.4.4, 5.4.7. Contemporary materials 5.5.1 to 5.5.3 and 5.5.6. Masonry maintenance 6.1.1, 6.1.4. Metal maintenance 6.1.8 and paint maintenance 6.1.12. The statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are one, the project is located within the primary, secondary, and tertiary AVCs. Two, elevating the interior of this contributing structure helps protect it from future damage and potential destruction or demolition. Three, the proposed modifications are being proposed to rectify inappropriate modifications in progress. Four, the proposed modifications will retain as much of the existing building as possible while still accomplishing the goal of elevating the interior of the house above the regulated flood elevation. Five, the proposed modifications will reconstruct the building using the same materials, details, and textures for significant design components or architectural features while still accomplishing the goal of elevating the interior of the house above the regulated flood elevation. Six, previously approved replacement of asbestos siding with a contemporary material is appropriate. And seven, the addition of a new deck in the tertiary AVC is appropriate. 
the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So we suggest as a motion, uh, the commission approved this application to include elevating the existing structure and making the proposed appurtenant modifications, citing the aforementioned guidelines and adding the following conditions. A landscaping plan is needed. Foundation vent, op foundation vent openings are to be indicated to remain. Deck is to be structurally separate from the house. Wood particle board edge board is to be replaced with solid wood and all new masonry joints are to match existing. That's the end of our report recommendations. Okay, so I call for evidence and testimony from any state, city, or government body. Seeing none in the audience, we have none that have been sent in. So would the applicant like to make any final comments at this time, sir? No matter. So I call for discussion among the commission members at this point in time. Be sure that you state your name first before you make your comments or questions. Uh, James Woods, my question is to Matt or to the builder, has a list of materials been turned in on this? And once the house is raised from the inside, what's going to happen to that, that flooring that's where the door is now? Are you going to infill that, or is it going to be what's going to what is it going to look like? You're going to raise you're going to raise the first floor up, correct? Yes, sir. Oh. It's only one floor. Right. It's a one. It's a first, one level right. So you're raising that up. Yes, so what's going to be there underneath that? It's going to be a concrete structure. Uh, pier. It's going to be a pier system. Oh. I can't hear you. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the question. Speak a little, just a little bit louder, sorry. I think there's a drawing uh, going on here. Drawing Okay. Um, I'll bring up the drawings. Hold on a second. Almost there. Come on. Yeah. There we go. So, sir, what are we looking at here? I have to speak about here. Um, well, explain what we're looking at. That's the step for the floor system and the and the foundation. It's showing sure. here with a uh, wood structure on top. And then this is uh James, does that answer your question? Um yes and no, but I'll take that. Has the list of materials been turned in, Matt? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, it's so glory. Okay, do we have any other questions or any other comments? Okay, Peggy Broadway here. Shan, are are you are you, are you saying that you're going to have concrete block from ground level all the way up to the top of the house? Are you going to have a foundation look at all? Uh, no, we're not. You'll see. Shannon, get closer to the mic. I can't hear him. No, no, this one right here. Um, it will look just like that house. I'm just placing the top elevation on with the block. And the windows will go up. Everything will go to is 
to allow the children to die. Uh, it's going to be a, a it's going to be a block structure from the outside, just like it looks right now. Do, do you have a picture of what it's going to look like this, in here? Yeah, yes. The final. You, you, you can look at the original drawings of it, and it's going to look exactly the same. There's not going to be anything different. In it. Well, we're not going to raise the house from the, uh, the underneath. We're raising the house from up top and going up with it. And then right. So, so the basically, the up and windows and doors and all that. So, just, so like that, right? That's all, just like it is. Right so this is James again. So basically you're adding a floor, but it's going to be on top, right? We're in four foot, at least four foot out of the top of the shop. And are these the same windows and doors in this picture? Is this the same windows and doors that are presently on the house? Uh, we, we saved them. They're stored under, they're stored under another house. When we go back in. So the answer to my question is no, these are not? Those are not the original windows. This was uh, remodeled in 2000 and maybe 18 or 17, and they had all new windows put in it. And we're using those same windows that we took out, put back in there. Okay, that was my question. Uh, Peggy Broadway, Shannon, it looks like you've got the, the cross hatch uh, block down below. Are you going to replace the current block with the cross hatch? What that is just showing you, I think that's just showing you how far you have to raise it. Yeah, so um, if I can interrupt a second to explain uh, the cross hatch area, this drawing is from the original, sorry, <laughs> this drawing is from the original application and approval and that cross hatched area would have been the new block that would have been needed to infill once the house was raised up in the air and then brought down back on the new block uh, his proposal is to do uh, kind of the opposite and that is to leave the house where it is and put that same amount of new block on top of the house on top of the walls uh, and uh, therefore get the space in order to move the inside of the house up that same amount. That is the that's how the house will look So if this new layout, where does the water go? Under the house? Yeah. yeah. You, you have It'll, It'll be elevated to 11 foot. Uh, uh, it'll have vents in it. The water can go in and out of, from under the house. So there's some flood vents in there somewhere. Well, the flood vents are in there or inadequate, so we have to put new flood vents in. Yes. Okay. Yeah. About the square foot of the house. Yeah. So rooftops here. So when you say you're going to leave the walls. That are there presently. The exterior. As, yes, the exterior walls. So, what are you doing about the door opening, the windows openings? What are you doing about that if you're leaving know. the present exterior walls? What we're doing is we're putting a we're putting a floor system in this house. We're raising it up to above the floodplain. We'll take measurements before we take the old floor system out on the windows, the width of the windows, the height of the windows, the, the sill of the windows. And we'll take that measurement. And once we move this floor system up, we'll use those measurements to put the windows back in the, the approximate um, elevation by the interior of the floor. So. And what are you going to do with the openings of the floor and the door? You're going to fill that in? We're going to fill that in the block. Okay. And what have you done with the roof that was originally on the house? Oh, it's in the dump. And what what you there was really no wood except the the roof structure and the roof structure on the back we had to take at least at least half of it off because they had a big dormer on the back and then we had to extend that other roof line come off the back so all back the roof line is going to be all in anyway. okay and, and that was previously approved under the previous coa when we, when we got into it it just it just didn't wasn't going to work the way 
because once we got the numbers to try to race this thing, it's just and they couldn't they couldn't guarantee that that they could keep it together. Right. There's a mixture of four for me. You got a race flat four. You got the the wood structure four. You got two years on the inside and yeah. four years next to the outside one. So it was and it was just it was just it said it was not going. It wasn't going to work with what they had to do. And there was a problem. And what have you done with the chimney in the house? Um, Is it still we're there? Down, we're putting it back in from the roof structure up. Mm -hmm. So you're you're taking the chimney down and you're going to put it back up. It's already down. Yes, it's going to go back up. And you're going to put it the, the original chimney back up. Uh, no. I thought you just said you took it down and you're going to put it back we're up. We're going to put a, a chimney coming from above the roof line, at the roof line up. What we're doing is we're redirecting all the floor plan in that little house. There's no really, there's no really way to, to do it. And, and I was under the understanding, unfortunately, I, I made a mistake there and that that chimney was supposed to come out. And so, and what she was doing is asking me the question, can we get that chimney out? And yeah. No, you're not supposed to have. Hmm? Yeah, you're not supposed to have, right? right? And so, why can you not put the chimney? If you have all the parts of the chimney, why can you not put the cap, the original cap to the chimney? Mm -hmm. um, and but the brick is gone. Christian Evans, can you possibly get a get um, bricks that are the same era or the same style? to put a chimney back at that spot? Yeah, there's going to be a chimney going back in that spot. There will but be. You're going to, are you going to be using br bricks that are of that time period? I can try to find them. OK, thank you. Your clause. Peggy Crosley, uh, Shannon, if you're going to add bricks to the top, uh, it will not be crosshatch, right? It'll be just like what's there, the concrete block. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, so she asked if uh, you're adding the new bricks, they won't have cross hatching on them. No. The, the cross hatching is just a, um, uh, a way that the architect who drew the drawing used to represent which blocks would be new and which ones were existing. So uh, none of that cross hatching was proposed, uh, approved, or expected. And it is no longer, and it is still not proposed to have cross hatching. It will just be a concrete block that matches the rest of the concrete block. Uh, Peggy Broadway here. If, if, if it doesn't have a excuse me, if it doesn't have a foundation, it'll be the only house in the historic district that doesn't have a foundation. It's going it to take a, a lot of shrubbery to come. Oh, oh. I, I think she means uh, something that doesn't look like a uh, foundation. Exactly. exactly. Okay. I know we had, on these block wall, we had the foundation uh, looked at and, and tested and all that stuff to make sure it would hold what we were trying to do before we even started the project. And we came back, the engineer said, that would be the best way to do it. Madam Chair, Trip Ewer. Um, Shannon, I want to thank you for coming to design review. Again, this was several months ago and, and we're catching up. Uh, we appreciate the fact that you owned up to having made a mistake because there were num numerous contractors involved and the property owner didn't convey the certificate of appropriateness to each contractor. And uh, I, I appreciate the fact that you've admitted you kind of got yourself in a situation by deconstructing in this case prior to knowing what you needed to retain. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and also appreciate the fact that uh, you stopped work immediately upon notification that, that you were in the wrong. And, uh, uh, it appears to me that we're doing about the best we can uh, to, to correct the situation. Uh, being that uh, we're going to be able to replicate the design 
as originally approved, the only uh, problem being is that, you know, we've lost that historic material, but, uh, but we know why because of the, the lack of communication between you and the property owner. So uh, thank you for being here tonight. It's on me. Well, I appreciate that, but uh, thank you for being here tonight and thank you for trying to help make this as right as we possibly can. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner. Anybody else got any comments or questions about this project, where it is at this point in time and what's being proposed at this point in time? Good plots. I have a question about the landscape plan. Uh, I mean, the, the drawing that this was showed what looked to be- Can you talk there. a little bit louder? We can hardly hear you. Okay, the drawing that I saw, showed what looked like fairly mature plantings in front of the building to mitigate the height. Uh, yeah. uh, my concern would be that the plantings that go in be mature plantings as opposed to little bushes that will take 10 years to hide the fact that this house is completely out of proportion now. Right, and that's what, we, that's what we're gonna do. Um, uh, the owner knows that she has to put taller plants in and we've talked about that. So um, in the other two houses we raised, the, the elevation doesn't look that bad on them. I mean, we thought it was gonna be a lot worse than it was to get it over the blood plant, but we only added like four foot to it, maybe, at most. Well, I think there's a minimum above the plant, 11 foot. I understand that, and I understand the difficulty in getting it at first floor high enough, but the buildings around it also are low, so that, and when we talk about proportion and design considerations, when you look at where it's sitting, the buildings it's sitting next to, and now suddenly it's four or so feet higher than it used to be, something has to break that elevation. And, and, and we, we know that we have to put mature plants in. Okay. And I know fine. the front house does, well, the blue house doesn't, I mean, it's gonna sit back, so. It's not going to look as dominant as the, the yellow house in the front and the other one in the back of that one. So. Okay, any other questions or discussion? My, my comment is that since you are going to put the chimney back in, that you find older brick to build the chimney. It's not try, but that you find older brick to put the chimney back together sir and we do appreciate your efforts considering the situation in which you find yourself okay so does does someone uh then uh want to make an uh, a motion and um whoever makes the motion i think needs to include the fact that the plants need to be mature plants and the fact that the chimney bricks that are replaced need to be all bricks that are in the same uh, era as the house, if those two things can be added to the motion. So who's going to make the motion? Please give your name. Madam Chair. Okay, go ahead, George. George Bray, I'll make a motion. I move we find the application for certificate of appropriateness for 715 East Front Street be not incongruous with Newburn's Code of Ordinance, section 15-411 to 15-429, and Newburn's Historic District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of facts. Guidelines, utilities, 2.3.1 and 2.3.2, .2. landscaping, 2.4.3, parking, 2.7.4, Modifications 3.2.1 through 3.2.4. Foundations 4.1.4. Walls, trim, and ornamentation 4.2.1 and 4.2.4. Windows, doors, and openings 4.3.1 and 4.3.3. Entrances 4.4.4. Roofs 4.5.1 through 4.5.3. Decks and patios, 4.6.2 and 
masonry, 5.1.1 through 5.1.3, wood, 5.2.1 and 5.2.2, metals, 5.3.1 through 5.3.2, paint, 5.4.1 through 5.4.4 and 5.4.7, contemporary materials, 5.5.1 to 5.5.3, and 5.5.6. Masonry maintenance, 6.1.1 and 6.1.4. Metal maintenance, 6.1.8. And paint maintenance, 6.1.2. Findings of fact. The project is located within the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs. Elevating the entry of this contributing structure helps protect it from future damage and potential destruction or demolition. The proposed modifications are being proposed to rectify inappropriate modifications in progress. The proposed modifications will retain as much of the existing building as possible while still accomplishing the goal of elevating the interior of the house above the regulated flood elevation. The proposed modifications will reconstruct the building using the same materials, details, and textures for significant design components or architectural features while still accomplishing the goal of elevating the interior of the house above the regulated flood elevation. Previously appro approved replacement of asbestos siding with a contemporary material is appropriate. The addition of a new deck in the tertiary ABC is appropriate. The project is not incongruous with the guidelines. I would like to attach the following conditions. A landscaping plan is needed containing mature plants and should be and approved before occupation. Foundation vent openings are to be indicated to remain. Deck is to be structurally separate from the house. Wood particle board edge board is to be replaced with solid wood. All new masonry joints are to match existing and period bricks should be used to reconstruct the chimney. Thank you, George. All of those in favor of the motion, if we can do that through roll, roll call. James Woods, I second the motion. Thank you, James. All votes in favor of the motion? Trip Urey? Yes. James Bisbee? Yes. George Brake? Yes. Peggy Broadway? Yes. Christian Evans? Yes. Joseph Klotz? Yes. Ellen Sheridan? She's, she's removed oh, herself. Right. Recused. James Woods? Yes. And Ruth Cox? Yes. So all the commissioners present had voted a, uh, yay for the uh, vote. So the um, COA uh, is, so the application is approved. Do I have a motion to issue a COA on Not the condition sure. that no. Go ahead, James. Uh, Madam Chair, I move okay. that a COA be issued with the following conditions that you state. Let's see. Uh, Madam Chair, okay. Trip Ewer, I think this is a previously approved COA that we are amending, is it not? Yes, it is. Or is this a new? Right. So there would be no motion to issue a certificate if it's previously issued. Okay. So, do we need to consider these conditions if you receive anything within 24 hours? Thank you. Uh, so, I would on the, I would err on the side of caution in this case uh, to go ahead and do a. a, a a vote like we would for the other ones uh, to allow for 24 hours of written comment period. Okay. So I call for a motion to issue a COA on the condition that there are no written comments by persons with legal standing are received within 24 hours of the approval of the application. If any such comments are received within that time period, the vote on issuing the COA shall be continued to the next HBC meeting. So 
This is Jim Bisbee. Uh, uh, I make that motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? Go ahead. Second. I second a motion. Okay. So we'll call for a vote. All of those in favor, we'll do it by roll call. Okay. All in favor, Trip, Yuri? Yes. James Bisbee? Yes. George Brake? Yes. Peggy Broadway? Yes. Christian Evans? Yes. Joseph Klotz? Yes. James O. Woods? Yes. And Ruth Cox? Yes. So we have all yays for the COA. So this COA can be approved as of, this, as of the conditions of this meeting. Right. 24 okay. hours. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your efforts to do the best we can in the situation that we have. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, 520 News 3. My, Madam Chairman, this yes. is Christian Evans. I'd like yes. to move that our Commissioner Sheridan please come back up to the to the podium. Okay, uh, all of us the... in favor? Do we need to do I that by roll motion. call? Yes. Okay, roll, roll call, call please. please. All right. Trip Yuri. For, perhaps I should second that first. Oh, do we? Have, we do not have a second, right? And then, having done that, mm -hmm. um, okay, I support the motion. Trip Yuri. James Bisbee. Yes. George Brake. Yes. Peggy Broadway. Yes. Kristen Evans. Yes. Joseph Klotz. Yes. James Woods. Yes. And Ruth Cox. Yes. So. Our comrade for joining us has been approved. Thank y'all so much. I sincerely hope this is the last time we have this issue. I okay. feel like it's been ongoing for a long time. Yeah. You don't need to feel that way. In actuality, it has been. So let us move on quickly to 520 New Street. <laughs> Since we got that one taken care of. Oh. Okay, for 520 New Street, we will have new people joining us via Zoom. Yes. Yes, Matt, we're here. We're, we're here by audio. Ah, okay. Uh, you come up on the screen as Charles Bosmajian. And, yeah, there's also Barbara Borman here. So, Pastor Borman, when you speak, you'll have to also uh, identify yourself. I'll be happy to. Okay. So, uh, 520 New Street. Oops. Sorry, I'm making a few adjustments here. And sharing the screen. Why is that not correct? Unshare that. There we go. Okay. All right. Here's, the, oops, sorry. Go to scroll mode. And we have to change the scale and move it to the middle. There we go. So back to the top. Here we go. We have the application for 520 New Street with all the information attached sheets and signatures and date. Here are the attached sheets with project information. These, of course, were in your packet for your review and uh, we also have uh, an email information as well, uh, indicating there are three pictures following. So this is the existing chain link fence to be replaced. And immediately adjacent, you can see uh, the fence that they're intending to replace it with. The chain link fence is off screen off the edge of the uh, edge of the picture there, so. 
And there you have both together the chain link and the sample. So that expects that sample will be replicated in place of the chain link. Another view of, on the of the outside of the fence to be created and a long view of the rest of their fence along that street. And then the outside view of the chain link fence from the other side. And uh, there's garbage cans there, so that will then screen view of the garbage cans. And uh, looks like an enlargement of a detail of the fence. Uh, there we go. I guess that'll have to do. You can see the top edge and the support structure. And then here we have the zoning and inspection report. Um, it meets the land use ordinance and will not require a building permit. And then we're ready for recommendations as appropriate. Since the applicants are on audio only, I might as well leave the, uh, the images of the application on screen. Okay. Okay. Yep. Are there any members who have any conflict of interest with this application? Are there any members or administrator for uh, any issues on the application of completeness? Do the applicant or representative of the applicant want to present anything about the application? And if so, please give your name. I would like Barbara Borneman. I'd like to just make one clarification because some of the neighbors who have no problem with this asked us if we were replacing the entire fence. We are not. It's only one section, one panel of the chain link fence to make one panel of the existing fence on Metcalf Street. I just wanted to make that clarification. Okay, is any, anybody else who's an applicant want to present anything? Okay, do we have any testimony from proponents, opponents? We don't have any in the audience. Do we have any online? No, we do not. Okay, so there's no rebuttal then. Uh, is there any comments from anyone with relevant evidence and standing? We have none in our audience and we have none online, correct? That's correct. Okay. So, sir, could you provide us with the staff findings and recommendations? Certainly. Now I have to share again. There we go. Okay. So this is the project for Charles Bosmajan and Barbara Borneman. 520 New Street. It is known as the Palmer Tisdale House, built circa 1767, 1800, and 1820 to 1830, uh, and is considered a contributing resource in the historic district. Uh, it is 520 New Street. The project is to include replacement of a chain link fence with a wood fence and brick pier to match the existing adjacent fencing in the primary ABC. Staff submits the following historic district guidelines as appropriate to this application. Fences and garden walls, 2.5.1. Design principles, 3.1.1. And statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, the project is located within the primary ABC. The new fence is to match existing fencing for this property along the sidewalk in the primary ABC. The project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So we recommend as a motion, the commission approve this application to include replacement of a chain link fence with a wood fence and brick pier to match the existing adjacent fencing in the primary ABC, citing the aforementioned guidelines. Thank you. 
Is there anybody who wants to present evidence and testimony from any state, city, or government body? Seeing none in the audience, and I believe we have none online. That's correct. Does the applicant want to make any final comments and give your name if you do? This is Charles Foss Major, and I don't believe we do. Thank you. So we will call for a discussion uh, of the applicant by the commission yes. members. Anybody have any questions or statements to make? Uh, Barbara, when you say you're replacing one panel, does that one panel take care of the chain link fence or will there still be chain link fence? Barbara Borneman, there will still be chain link fence. Is, is the chain link fence still in the primary area or does it go back to tertiary? This is Charles Bus Major and it goes back to tertiary. It's along the property line with the Jacobsons all the way back. Are there any other questions or any other comments? So could you show us in the picture Pardon. what small part of the chain leak fence you are replacing if you're not replacing the whole chain leak fence? Could we have those pictures back up? Yes. Let's see. There we go. Is this, would this one work the best, do you think? Yeah, right that one, I think so. So what street are we looking at here? Metcalf Street? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so next to this piece of wooden fence here, you're going to put another piece of that wooden fence and one brick tier. Barbara yeah. Borneman, correct, that, that it'll be a, Perpen uh, a um, perpendicular one. And so if you can imagine that entire panel, the same length as that panel of the wood fence will be perpendicular, re replacing one section of the chain link. It goes a little beyond, I don't know if you can tell by the picture, but there's a chain link pole uh, and it'll go a little bit beyond that almost up to, it'll actually go up to where we have some uh, Confederate Jasmine to uh, um, on the chain link fence. Approximately here where I have the hand. Exactly, it'll be about there. Okay, and you're gonna build another brick pier there. Co correct. Okay. All right, any of the commissioners got any questions or any comments? Okay. If you will state your name, I call for a motion regarding this COA to approve or deny it. Christian Evans, I move that we find this application a certificate of appropriateness for 520 New Street, New Bern, to be not in incurious with the New Bern Code of Ordinance, Section 15. Dash 411 to 15-429 and New Bern's historical district guidelines based on the following Pacific guidelines and finding of fact. The applicable uh, guidelines is fence and garden walls 2.5.1, design principles 3.1.1, and the finding of fact, the project is located within the, pr the primary ABC the new fence is to be matching the existing fence for this property along with the sidewalk and the primary AVC. Three, the project is not included in Congress with the guidelines. James Woods, I second that motion. Thank you, James. So can we have a vote on the motion by roll call? All those in favor, so Trip Bury? Yes. James Bisbee? Yes. George Brake? Yes. Peggy Broadway? 
Yes. Christian yes. Evans. Yes. Joseph Klotz. Yes. Ellen Sheridan. Yes. James O. Woods. Yes. Ruth Cox. Yes. So all members of the commission, uh, commission have voted yay, so the motion does pass. Can I have uh, a call for a motion to issue the COA on the condition that no written comments by persons with legal standing are received within 24 hours of the approval of the application? If any such comments are received within that time period, the vote on issuing the COA shall be continued to the next HPC meeting. So could I have a motion and please state your name? Madam Chair, James Woods, I move that a COA be issued with the statements issued. Thank you. Do we have a second? Christian okay. Evans, second. Thank you. All of those who approve it, we will do by roll call. Chair Puri. Yes. James Bisbee. Yes. George Brake. Yes. Peggy Broadway. Yes. Christian Evans. Yes. Joseph Klotz. Yes. Ellen Sheridan. Yes. James Woods. Yes. And Ruth Cox. Yes. So the uh, motion to issue the COA has been approved. So uh, you all can get uh, in contact with Matt and move forward. Okay, let us move then to 518 Med Street. You. You're welcome, thank you all. So, sir, could you tell, tell us about 518 Medcap Street? Certainly. So, uh, this is the application for this one. I'm going to go with the scrolling. Okay. Okay. Um, typically, uh, when the applicants aren't present, wait, I'm sorry. Yes, geez. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have the applicants represented at present. <laughs> All right, continuing. Uh, the application uh, has full information, is signed and dated. The aforementioned uh, representative uh, has been assigned to be Go Architectural Design PLLC, which is represented here by Sarah Opflerbach, and that is signed and notarized. And now we have uh, some very large drawings. There we go. And uh, shows the front of the house, the existing, obviously the existing conditions. This uh, lower left drawing shows the corner of the house that will be removed and replaced. This is that same corner from the back. And then we're also looking at the right side of the back where there will be uh, modifications as well. But take note of the window. Uh, the existing floor plan, uh, some of the demolition work, and now I'll zoom in a little bit more on this one. So, uh, this drawing shows the second floor and simply the roof of the new addition. Uh, the first floor is shown now with that new addition. The previous one was quite uh, taller, and now this is being used as a bedroom. The kitchen will also be modified, and 
there will be a door added where there was a window on the back and they'll be adding a new stoop as well. Uh, of note, I suppose, is to see that the new walls are recessed from the existing corners. Oh, uh, me. Okay, there's this other information on the right that I forgot. Yes, okay. So simply the foundation plan and wall section, structural information. Then uh, some enlargements of the kitchen remodel on the interior. And I don't believe we had anything else on that right side there, no. So now looking at the existing elevation, so we see the existing small addition in that corner there, and then from the rear. And now we'll move down to the proposed. You can see this is where that small addition was from the side. Now enlarged, and then on the back, there's a window and the skylight in the roof. So uh, that's all a one story addition. Then the window that had been here in the rear is now replaced by a new door with the stoop. And you can see the stoop from the side over here as well. Okay, so we then have the zoning and inspections report, which indicates that it meets the requirement of the land use ordinance and will require a building permit. So, and our recommendations will be next when you request them. Okay. Okay. Do we have any members with any conflict of issue of interest with this project? Do we have any members or administrators with, with any issues on the application completeness? Hearing none, we have one person left in our audience, and I think she is going to talk about this project. If you would give us your name and um, any uh, comments that you want to make about this application. Madam uh, Chair, George Bray. Uh, I don't really have any more comments to make. That was pretty much the whole project. You've seen it in design review um, two months ago, I think. And it's pretty straightforward, just removing a very small addition and putting back a slightly larger one. Okay. You may have to speak louder. I don't really have any more comments. I think you did a good job presenting. Okay. Okay, you may, you'll probably have to stay here to answer questions, though. So, we have no one left in our audience here. Are there any opponents or opponents online that wish to speak? There's no one online. Okay, so we won't need to go through the rebuttal. Is there any, there's no one that has relevant evidence or has standing that wants to speak online? No, there's okay. no one, no. Okay. Uh, so, sir, would you like to give us the staff findings and recommendations for this project? Certainly. I need to refuse myself. I'm within the 100 foot zone. Oh, George is saying something. You said you got to refuse yourself, George? Yes, I'm within the 100 foot zone of this property. I've, I've gotten the letter. All right. So does somebody, if you give your name, want to put forth a motion to have George removed? Christian Evans, I move that George Brake be recused from this uh, particular project. Is there a second? James Woods, I second a motion. Okay. James All of those in favor by roll call. Okay, so uh, Troop Your. Yes. James Bisbee? Yes. George Brake? Yes. 
Peggy Broadway? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. We're recusing George Brake. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> you know, Christian Evans? Yes. Joseph Klotz? Yes. Ellen Sheridan? Yes. James O. Woods? Yes. L. Owen Ruth Cox? Yes. So all are in favor of uh, the recusing. So if you will do that, and then we will carry on with the uh, administrator providing staff findings and recommendations. Okay. So, <laughs> there we go. Everyone can read it. Or read along. Uh, this project is Thank for you. Joe and Cathay Alex, and they're represented by Go Architectural Design PLLC. Project is at 518 Metcalf Street, also known as the Oscar Kafer Rental, Rental House Number no. Three. Constructed circa 1904 to 1907. It is considered a contributing resource in the historic district. The inventory, National Register inventory description of 2003 describes it as two stories, three bays wide, two bay projection with pedimented gable, gable front roof and interior chimney. It is a twin of number 520. So 518 Metcalf Street, it, the project is to include replacement of existing one-story rear addition with one-story construction and replacing the kitchen window with a new doorway and a brick stoop in the secondary and tertiary ABCs. The staff submits the following historic guidelines as appropriate to this application. Design principles 3.1.2, modifications 3.2.1, 3.2.2. Additions 3.1.1 through 3.3.3, foundations 4.1.1 and 4.1.3, walls trim and ornamentation 4.2.1, 4.2.2, windows, doors, and openings 4.3.1 through 4.3.3, roofs 4.5.1 through 4.5.6, decks and patios 4.6.1 through 4.6.4, .4. masonry 5.1.1 through 5.1.5, Wood 5.2.1, 5.2.2. Paint 5.4.1 through 5.1.4. The statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, one, the project is modifications to a contributing structure within the secondary and tertiary ABCs. Two, the proposed design modifications, components, and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Three, the zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And four, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. All right, so staff recommends the commission approve this application to include replacement of existing one-story rear addition with one-story construction and replacing the kitchen window with a new doorway and brick stoop in the secondary and tertiary ABCs, citing the aforementioned guidelines. Thank you. So is there any call for, is there, is there any evidence or testimony from any state, city, or government body? There is no one in the audience and there is no one online, correct? That's correct. No one okay. is online. So any comments, ma'am, that you would like to make at this time? Thank you. So it is open for discussion by the members of the commission. Please state your name before you make a comment or ask a question. Joe Klotz, just a question, the roofing material or the addition? Shingles. Asphalt shingles. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments by any members? Hearing none, I call for a motion to approve the COA. If you would give your name when you make the motion and your name when you second. 
Madam Chair, James Lewis, I move that we find the application for a certificate of appropriateness for 518 Metcalf Street to be not in congruence with New Burns Code of Ordinance, sections 15411 to 15429, and New Burns Historical District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. Uh, design principal spot 3.1.2 modifications 3.2.1 through 3.2.2 additions 3.3.31 through 3.3.3 foundations 4.1.1 through 4.1.3 walls trims and ornamentation 4.2.1 4.2.2 windows doors and openings 4.3.1 through 4.3.3 roofs 4.5.1 through 4.5.6, decks and patios, 4.6.1 masonry, 5.1.1 through 5.1.5, wood, 5.1.2, 5.2.2, paint, 5.4.1 through 5.1.4, findings of fact. One, that the project is modifications to a contributing structure within a secondary and tertiary ABCs. Two, the proposed design modifications, components, and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Three, the zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed the project and commented accordingly. Four, that the project is not in congruence with the guidelines. Thank you. Do we have a second? Jim Mr. Nevin, second. second. Okay. Wait, who was that? I think there were two of them. Jim Bisbee did. All right. Jim did it. <laughs> okay. All votes in favor, we will take a roll call. Trip Ewing. Yes. yes. James Bisbee. Yes. George Brick. Oh, wait, he's a recused, sorry. Peggy Broadway. Yes. Christian Evans. Yes. Joseph Klotz. Yes. Ellen Sheridan. Yes. James O. Woods. Yes. Ruth Cox. Yes. All are in favor, so the motion passes. I call for a motion to issue a COA on the condition no written comments by persons with legal standing are received within 24 hours of the approval of the application. If any such comments are received within that same time period, the vote on issuing the COA shall be continued to the next HPC meeting. Do I have a motion to issue a COA? And please give your name. Joe Klotz. Mr. Aye. Jim Bisbee, I make that motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Christian Evans, second. Thank you. We have a second. Let us call for the vote to approve, to issue the COA by roll call. Trip Yes. yes. James Bisbee. Yes. Peggy Broadway. Yes. Christian Evans. Yes. Joseph Klotz. Yes. Ellen Sheridan. Yes. James O. Woods. Yes. Ruth Cox. Yes. There is a yes by all members of the commission, so a COA can be issued. You're welcome. Thank you for being here with us. <laughs> we, we figured it all out ourselves. We figured out how to do this. <laughs> I always We're have just help. here. Somebody else figured all of this out. We're just present. Doing as we're told. <laughs> Madam Chair, Trip Ewer, um, I make a motion that we bring George Brake back to the uh, forum. Okay. Second the motion. Second James Woods, I second that motion. Okay, all in favor, which we'll do by roll call. Trip Ewer? Yes. James Bisbee? Yes. Peggy Broadway? Yes. Kristen Evans. Yes. 
Joseph Klotz. Yes. Ellen Sheridan. Yes. James Woods. Yes. Ruth Cox. Yes. It is a unanimous vote for him to return to our board tonight. Thank you. Okay, so now we're on 618 Craven Street. If you could give us some information about that. 618 Craven Street. Is that not right? So we are expecting the owner, the Linyards, to be joining us via Zoom. They're audio only? Yes. Audio only. So this is the application with all the complete information and the signature dated. And they also have designated uh, Go Architectural Design PLLC, i.e. Sarah Afflerbach as their representative. And that has been signed, notarized. And once again, we'll go back to the full sheet here. And we're gonna end up jumping down somewhere and back up again. Okay, so these are photographs of the existing structure. See two stories and it is essentially flush with the existing grade around it. Uh, with, I guess, or so above the, the grade. Uh, my internet connection is unstable. However, uh, we see on the lower left is a photograph from the rear of the house. In case that's not clear. And, I'm sorry. Yes. And to the right, the shutters here are the shutters on the next photograph. And now this is actually the side of the house. They have yeah. their patio on the side of the house. And yeah. this gateway here and the mm -hmm. fence goes out to the front yard. So let's go back up here to the upper left photograph and you can see the fence over here in the lower left corner. That is the, I mean, the gate. And so that then leads back out to the front and you can see the gate slightly in this photograph as well. So these other two images are represent uh, images of similar conditions in our historic district. Uh, this was being a, a house on Pollock Street. And then I guess this image represents the shutters that would be uh, actually added into the structure as well as the structure being raised. So this provides a site plan for the project. The house is essentially in black. However, this section over here is really just a patio. And here again, here again, this is the floor plan with the front door at the bottom and the patio on the side is shown here in a dark hatching. These are elevations, current elevations of the house. Uh, I guess uh, to note is, of course, how close it is to the ground level. If we need, we can pull up this larger image to read those numbers. So it shows approximately five inches between grade and the first floor. You can also see an elevation of that fence and gate and yeah. some of the architectural details. Um, let's remove this up. And then the side that is uh, unaffected, essentially, uh, other than that we elevated. Then going down to the other side where the patio is located is this elevation here. And then we'll be able to remove the process. 
and then and this, this is, is the back, back of the house, and the patio is on the on right. right. The gate is actually all the all way to the front of the house. All right. So now we would look at. I'm gonna have to make this smaller for a moment. Uh, so we can future plan of the house and. And the patio will have uh, a stairway added to it in order to allow access out of the house. And then out front as well, there is a stairway to be added out front. Although uh, it's going to be yeah. Oops, am I going to have that wrong? No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Didn't miss All right. So we have some architectural details, construction details here about how the actual structure will happen. But primarily, the framing plan and the foundation. So we're adding that foundation wall around the perimeter and piers down the middle to add uh, structure. Flooring for the first floor. Can you all still hear me? No, it's all garbled. Yeah. That was better, Matt. Yeah, because I, I think it's my speaker is interfering with my microphone. So I'm just going to turn down my speaker more. Is that better? You're breaking up, Matt. Yeah, so I don't know what's with my internet connection. I did get a warning earlier that it, my internet connection is unstable. Sound pretty good right now. Better? Okay. Thank, Thank you. Okay. So back to now. This is an elevation showing the elevation of the house uh, with the additional six feet proposed here. And you can see that the entire house remains the same. We add some stairs and steps on the front, which you can see from the side here for the front of the house. And if we look here quickly on the left, this is a view of the new stairway to be added to the side of the house onto the patio. So that's then the side view from the non-patio side. This will be the patio view side of the house with the patio and the new stairway. And also then the side view of the front stairs on the other side. Uh, you can see uh, this black rectangle represents the gate current location and the remaining location of the gate. And here is the rear view of the house. The gate is still there, but it's it's obscured by the uh, stairway at the bottom, the stairway in this view. Let's see, and some of the plans. More plans. Uh, showing the changes to the kitchen area. And, and here we have, this is the um, elevation certificate, which is the document which uh, provides the uh, existing height above sea level for the existing finished floor. And that happens to be shown here in the middle of the screen 5.5 feet. And we also have to check that it is the NAVD 88, which is the most recent sea level um, datum. 
So it's five, 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 five feet above sea level. The sea level or the flood level for this area is expected to be nine feet, I believe. And then with the freeboard required by the city, that makes it 11 feet. So by adding six feet, uh, you're effectively only six inches above that required elevation. Uh, and that's just the rest of that document. Not so helpful for us. Uh, and then this was one of the first ones that we did with the email design review. Mm -hmm. And so these are the, first of all, the staff report, uh, which you all read in preparation for the, your comments. But it does include some uh, helpful illustrations. This also shows the approximate height of the uh, Foundation wall will be underneath the orange line and the bottom of the house will essentially rest on that orange line, It'll be moved up to rest on that orange line. So you have an idea as to the, uh, I'm sorry? Uh, the applicant's representative is indicating that that is also the level at which the water reached during the Hurricane Florence. So and these are other photographs of surrounding structures. So in this photograph here, this is the subject house and the, uh, so to the left is this house and you can see it's uh, elevated slightly or to a certain extent. And then to the right of the house is another house uh, that also is elevated. Across the street are these homes, which are elevated uh, actually even more. Uh, and then also uh, another one across the street as well. Uh, this one was also pointed out that uh, it's interesting how it doesn't look like it's elevated as high as it is because of the the tapering or the sloping of the driveway picks up some of the height on the side but if you count all the steps on the front it's uh, actually quite a bit higher than you think about eight to nine steps so and then we indicated a various uh, guidelines for you that would be relevant and then you provided all of your comments from the first second and third round of comments and we have the inspections and zoning review document and indicating that it does meet the requirements of the land use ordinance and will require a building permit. And then we have our final recommendations for this. Okay. Now, um, let me see here. Is there anybody uh, who has any evidence or testimony from any state, city, or government body? There's nobody in the audience, and we have none online. So, ma'am, is there any final comments that you would like to make at this time? Uh, no, I do not. No, okay. there, uh, I believe there is uh, some neighbors that are also online for this project. Oh, oh there are. There are some people. Okay. All right, so do we want to bring them forth and let them, are they opponents or proponents? Uh, well, John and Maria Cho. Is it that they should be unmuted also? Yes, yes. So do they want to make some comments? I don't know. Okay. Hello, Chose. You are now unmuted and uh, available um, to speak when when called upon. Okay. So, <clears throat> does the applicant? Do you all have any comments that you all would like to make? No. Okay. 
Can you would, say, just say that again? Oh, nothing additional. Thank you. Okay. All right. Do do the owners? These are the owners that are online. Yes. Okay. Do you all have any comments that you would like to make to us? No, not at this time. We think uh, Sarah's done a great job with the preparation. Certainly. Okay. Thank you. And we have nobody in the audience, and we have nobody online. In no, we do. We do have somebody online. Okay. Uh, John Cho, I think we had it muted before. Can you hear us? Yes, we can now. Yes. So uh, they'll need to be sworn in before they speak. I thought they said they had no comments. Not at the moment. Right. Okay. Is that not what they said? No, we no I think. I no, the owners, said, of the owners. The owners said that they didn't have anything to say. Yes, the owner said they didn't have a comment, but the neighbors have just but said the they're chose, unmuted. Oh, right, the chose these just, are the neighbors, right. okay? So they need to be, uh, give their names and be sworn in then. Right. So uh, the Cho's, can you hear me? Yes. yes. I'm sorry. This is John Cho. This is Maria, we're here. Okay. Can you uh, we need to swear you in at this point before you speak, unless you're intending not to speak. We just have a, we have questions. Well then, well then you have to wait a second. We'll have to swear you in. Okay. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. I heard two affirmatives there. Okay. So if you have a question. Go ahead yeah, we with were, that. We were looking at the application. We we're wondering about the new utilities uh, that were going to be placed in, and uh, where were they? Where they were going to be actually located on the property? The utilities. Utilities. It was on page three of five in the comments of um, of the review. It was a new utility equipment. New utility equipment may be added to the project. So we were just curious about that. Um, nothing new is being added. Uh, what was existing will be replaced, but nothing new. Okay. Well, All right. What is that, Sarah? What is what? What was existing? I believe that there was an existing heat pump there, and uh, it probably shows on the photos. I'm not sure. On what side of the building is it? On that rear. On the rear. Those the uh, the HVAC system that the was on the back of the house. It's on the back. Yeah. Right. I think it was a photo of that, but we know where it is. Okay. We weren't quite sure what that meant. Yeah. New will be added. There's no plans to do something else. Okay. Decide if that will go. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see the stand right there. Oh, up yeah, here. Right there. Okay, so it's already elevated. Yeah, because it's. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. Will it be elevated any farther? It sh it's already above flood elevation because the the top floor is being used because it it is intact. Okay. Okay. Do you all have any other questions at this time, John or Marie? One of, yes. The one other question that we had was about um, the landscaping. So, uh, getting back to that. So, at the front of the house, there will be significant, um, you know, landscaping there for mitigation of the appearance of the brick. Yes, absolutely. And it's not something that we added to the plan, to be honest with you, but um, the owner has indicated that they would very much like to plant up that front yard and that side yard so that um, it mitigates that, uh, um, the new foundation. And that would be, they'd be happy to put that in as a condition. Okay, thank you. That's all, the, those are the questions that we had. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And we don't have anybody else online? There is nobody else online. Uh, okay. Just the owners and the people who just spoke. Okay. All right. So anyone with relevant evidence and has standing, we have nobody in the audience and no one online. Okay. And would you like to provide staff findings and recommendations? Certainly. Gonna go gray here. There we go. 
Okay. The applicants are Henry and Constance Lale Linyard with representation by Go Architectural Design PLLC. Project address is 618 Craven Street, also known as the Parsons House, built circa 1935. Uh, it is considered a contributing resource in the National Register Inventory, the description of which is as a craftsman style, two stories, two bays wide, three bays deep, 12 over one sash, gable entrance porch with square posts in the right front bay, second porch in north elevation, plain edge siding, corner beads, hip roof, exposed rafter ends, gabled attic dormer vent, an interior chimney. So the project for 618 Craven is to include one, raising the structure on a new brick and masonry foundation, two, new brick front steps, three, new painted wood posts and railing at the landing, four, new painted ornamental metal railing and pickets on the steps toward Craven Street, and five, new painted wood steps, railing and pickets at the side entry, all in the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs. So we submit. The following historic district guidelines are appropriate to this application. Utilities 2.3.1, 2.3.2, landscaping 2.4.3, foundations 4.1.1, 4.1.3, and 4.1.4, entrances 4.4.1 to 4.4.4, masonry 5.1.1 to 5.1.6, wood 5.2.1 to 5.2.2, Metals 5.3.1 to 5.3.3, paint 5.4.1 to 5.4.4, 5.4.6, and 5.4.9. Statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are one, the project is located within the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs. Two, elevating con this contributing structure helps protect it from future damage and potential destruction or demolition. Three, the proposed modifications do not conceal damage or remove significant design components or architectural features. And four, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include raising the structure on a new brick and masonry foundation, new brick front steps, new painted wood posts and railing at the landing, new painted ornamental metal railing and pickets on the steps toward Craven Street and new painted wood steps, railing and pickets at the side entry all in the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs, citing the aforementioned guidelines with the following condition. Uh, a landscape plan shall be submitted, approved by the HPC, and installed before the house is occupied. In addition to other requirements, the landscaping shall effectively screen the foundation wall to mitigate its visual effect. You good, you good. <laughs> okay. So, there is nobody in our audience and we have nobody online uh, for any other comments from the city, state, or government body. Any final ap uh, comments, ma'am, you'd like to make? Um, would the landscape plan need to come back to HPC or could that come back to staff? That's a question for you all. Right. That's a question for HPC to decide if um, it would be sufficient to come to staff or if uh, you want to actually see the plan and or whether or not you just want to have it reviewed at say a design review meeting or if it needs to come back to the full board at an official meeting can we have it come to design review and if it can be sail on to staff we can make that determination at that time yes and you could you could authorize that with your motion tonight whoever is brave enough to do that Somebody will move that. Uh, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. this is J James Woods. I move that we find an application for a certificate of appropriateness for 618 Craven Street be not in congruence with New Burns. Oh. Uh, code of ordinance <clears throat> sections 154111 through 15429 and New Bern's historical 
district guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of facts. Utilities 2.3.1 through 2.3.2, landscaping 2.4.3, foundations 4.1.1, 4.1.3, 4.1.4. Entrances 4.4.1 to 4.4.4. Masonry 4.1. Point, I mean 5.1.1 to 5.1.6. Wood 5.2.1 to 5.2.2. Metals 5.3.1 to 5.3.3. Paints 5.4.1 to 5.4.4, 5.4.6, and 5.4.9. Findings of fact, the project is located within the primary, secondary, and tertiary AVCs. Elevation two, elevating this contributing structure helps protect it from future damage and potential destruction or demolition. Three, the proposed modifications do not conceal, conceal damage or remove significant design components or architectural features. Four, that the project is not in congruence with the guidelines. Also that the landscaping plan come back before design review so that it might be talked about at the HPC and might be able to become a minor for staff. Is there a second to this motion? Please give me that. I second. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. All of those in favor, we will do by roll call. Ruth. Ruth. Yes. yes. Ruth. Peggy Bogley here. Just a question. As we get more and more houses in the historic district that are asking to be raised, how do we, we take into consideration the skylines of the houses beside of it? In other words, are we going to allow a snaggletooth um, row of houses is something we need to think about. Because if we raise one house up six feet and beside of it are houses at two feet, um, it's gonna look terrible. I mean, it's not gonna look right. Let's be thinking about that as we as we, in other words, can we require in the future, if a person wants to raise their foundation a certain height, that we can have also a drawing of some kind that shows how that affects the houses on either side. Peggy, this is Ellen. There, there's a. One of the subjects for the webinar that Matt sent us the questionnaire about was exactly this. So there is staff training, us being the staff coming on exactly this subject. And, and Peggy, you make a very good point. And this is, we've, we've required an ask of that in some of the houses that have been raised. What are the houses on either side? What are across the street? And this application has given us those pictures as well. What are the houses beside it and what are the houses across the street and some examples of others. So that's a very good point that, you know, we need to struggle and deal with as, as we move forward. Thank okay. you. So we, uh, let's see, where are we? So we need a motion to issue the seal. Are we on a roll call for the motion? I think. Right. First we're on a roll call for the motion. All of those who are in favor of the motion of the COA by roll call. That's correct. Okay. Trip Buren. Yes. James Bisbee. Yes. George Brake. Yes. Peggy Broadway. Yes. Christian Evans. Yes. Joseph Klotz. Yes. Ellen Sheridan. Yes. James O. Woods. Yes. And Ruth Cox. Yes. So all members are in favor, so vote is passed. Can I have a nomination to issue the COA on the condition no written comments by persons with legal standing are received within 24 hours of the approval of the application? If this should happen, 
the uh, vote on issuing the COA shall be continued to the next HPC meeting. Do I have um, a motion to issue a COA? And please give your name. George Brake, Madam Chair, so move. Thank you. A second? Christian George Evans, second. Thank you. All those in favor, we will do our roll call. Okay, Trip Bury. Yes. James Bisbee. Yes. George Brake. Yes. Peggy Broadway. Yes. Christian Evans. Yes. Joseph Klotz. Yes. Ellen Sheridan. Yes. James O. Woods. Yes. Ruth Cox. Yes. All commissioners are in favor, so the vote passes, so you can receive your COA. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. okay. He, he will let you know after tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, next item is 712 New Street. Thank you for coming. Uh, yes, yes. Have a nice weekend. 712 New Street. This is our last application for the evening at 8 12 p.m. So, 712 New Street, this is the application uh, adding the railing to the front porch. And they provided the rest of the information there, signed and dated. This is a photograph of the existing front of the house. Uh, remember, this house was uh, a brand new house a few years ago. And they would like to add railing where the railing is missing on the front porch. The railing would match the railing that's already hand railing that's there for the front steps. And we have our report. But oh wait, this was the um, another. Uh, sorry, this is a staff report that was prepared for the email me uh, email design review meeting. Uh, and I'm sorry, I just passed all of the comments. Oh my goodness! I don't know what happened there? But here are all your comments. Sorry, and something happened to the. Um, the applicant also provided a reply to the design review comments, and for some reason, there's some formatting problems here. I guess I can, um, I'll have to look. Well, we can probably figure this out. Uh, one, uh, the proposed railing is much closer to the rule than the exception. Try to find any other home in the historic area with a porch of about 24 inches or higher that does not have a railing. We believe that the home as is, is an exception to the standard in the historic area. Two, as indicated, the project is wood. Three, what is missing from the application is that the proposal is risk mitigation. The applicant has a fall history. The last fall from the porch very nearly impaled the applicant on a stake. And lastly, there is enough concern in the area as to the fall risk that the neighbors are donating the labor and materials for the project. <laughs> Sounds like a great neighborhood. All right. Uh, they also added uh, a representation where the railing post would land as compared to the hand railing post at the top of the steps and on the porch. So the red square is where the post, four by four post would be. And they also provided a mock-up of the proposed new porch railing, minus paint and such uh, here. Uh, and I will actually make it a little bit smaller so we get a full height view. So here you can see it in full height. All right, and then we have our zoning and inspection review for this, and they indicated that it meets the land ordinance and will not require a building permit. And then we have our recommendations. When you're ready. Are there any members who have any conflict of interest? 
Any member or administrator has any issues on the application's completeness? Do we have a representative here for the application? And there's no one here, is anyone online? Yes, the owner is online. Okay, with the owner, uh, if you want to state your name, you'll have to be sworn in. And if you have something you want to say. Okay, <laughs> my name is George Booth, and we're probably gonna have to swear in one of the dogs too. Yeah, it sounds like it. Okay, so um, uh, is your wife there as well? Yes, she is. Okay. So we might as well do both of you. Uh, okay. Are you ready? Do you swear to tell the truth and to the best of your knowledge? Yes, yes. I do. Okay. We both do. Yeah, okay. Okay, do you have any comments you'd like to make about the application? No, other than we're grateful for the kindness of our neighbors. <laughs> I hear that and isn't that wonderful? You have such wonderful neighbors. And we don't have anybody else online for comments for or against? No, we do not. Okay, all righty, so there's no rebuttal. Um, there's no one with any relevant evidence or standing because we have no one online and there's no one here in our audience. So, sir, would you like to provide staff findings and recommendations? Certainly. Okay. the staff report yes sorry I have to go down there we go so this is an application for George and Pat Booth for their project at 712 New Street uh, there is no historic property name because the building was built in 2013. So it is a non-contributing resource in the historic district. So the project is to include a new front porch railing in the primary ABC to match the existing front stair railing or handrail. Staff submits the following historic district guidelines as appropriate to this application. Design principles 3.1.5. Guidelines for modifications 3.2.1, 3.2.2, and 3.2.5. Guidelines for infill construction 3.4.2 to 3.4.4. Uh, a section of 4.4 entrances under project planning considerations. It is inappropriate to use stock entrance doors, porch railings, and other ornaments that do not proportionally relate to the building. Modern porch balusters convey a different visual appearance because they are generally taller and thinner. Center balusters between rails, I'm sorry, center the balusters between the rails and space them about three inches apart to increase the visual weight. Guidelines for entrances, 4.4.4. Guidelines for wood, 5.2.2. Guidelines for paint 5.4.2, 5.4.3. Statements of reason based on the information contained in the application in staff's judgment are, one, the project is work within the primary ABC. Two, the subject property is a modern infill construction. Three, the proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Four, the zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And five, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So the staff recommends the commission approve this application to include a new front porch railing in the primary ABC to match the existing front stair railing, citing the aforementioned guidelines with the following condition. The new railing shall be constructed to meet the steps hand railing as described by the applicant during the meeting, or in this case, as described in the photograph. Okay. There is no one in our audience from the state, city, or government as there's no one there and we don't have anybody online. So do the applicants want to make any final comments? Uh, no. Hearing none, we will now go to the commissioners and see what comments or questions they may have at this time. James Woods, I have a question. Um, Matt, was it something about this the hbac unit mentioned on this one no okay 
This is only hand railing, that's it. There's only hand railing. Okay, all right. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the COA and please give your name? Madam Chair. Go ahead, George. Return, James, if you want it. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> James will get the one next tomorrow. I want it to get done. <laughs> I'll, I'll make the motion. I move that we find the application for 712 New Street. I, I move that we find the application for a certificate of appropriateness for 712 New Street to be not incongruous with New Bern's Code of Ordinance sections 15 411 to 15 429 and New Bern's Historic District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. The applicable guidelines design principles 3.1.5. Guidelines for modifications 3.2.1, 3.2.2, and 3.2.5. Guidelines for infill construction 3.4.2 to 3.4.4. Uh, paragraph 4.4 entrances project planning considerations. Guidelines for entrances 4.4.4. Guidelines for wood 5.2.2. Guidelines for paint. 5.4.2 and 5.4.3. Findings of fact. The project is within is work within the primary ABC. The subject property is modern infill construction. The proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed the project and commented accordingly. The project is not incongruous with the guidelines. I would like to attach the following condition. The new railing shall be constructed to meet the steps hand railing as described by the applicant during the meeting. Thank you, sir. Do we have a second? Mr. Nevins, I second. All, right. All those in favor will vote by roll call. Trip Fury. Yes. James Bisbee. Yes. George Brake. Yes. Peggy Broadway. Yes. Christian Evans. Yes. Joseph Klotz. Yes. Oh, he's, there you go. Yes. Ellen Sheridan. Yes. Enzo Woods. Yes. And Ruth Cox. Yes. yes. So all vote in favor of this so the motion passed. So do we have a motion to issue a COA on the condition no written comments by persons with legal standing are received within 24 hours of the approval of the application? If any such comments are received within that time period, the vote on issuing the COA shall be continued to the next HPC meeting. Do I have a motion? And your Christian name, Evans. Please. Motion. I approve motion. Okay. Is there a second? second? James Wood, second. Thank you. All in favor by vote and roll call? Rip Buer. Yes. James Bisbee. Yes. George Brake. Yes. Peggy Broadway. Yes. Christian Evans. Yes. Joseph Klotz. Yes. Ellen Sheridan. Yes. James O. Woods. Yes. And Ruth Cox. Yes. So all vote in favor so the COA can be issued. So that ends all our applications for this evening. Uh, there are no general public in our building or in this room. Uh, sir, do you have anything online that's been submitted? We have none online and none that were submitted uh, prior to the meeting either. So we will have a continuation of this meeting tomorrow afternoon at 5.30 again. We'll need to vote to do so. Okay. Madam Chair, Trip okay. Ewer, I move that we continue this meeting uh, to May 21st, 2020, 5.30 p.m. here in the City Hall courtroom. Okay, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? 
George Briggs. Mr. Bisbee, I second. Okay. All those in favor, we will do by roll call. Trip Urey. Yes. James Bisbee. Yes. George Brake. Yes. Peggy Broadway. Yes. Christian Evans. Yes. Joseph Klotz. Yes. Ellen Sheridan. Yes. And James O. Wood. Yes. <laughs> oh, and Ruth Cox, sorry. Yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> so all of those were in favor of the votes passed, so we will continue this uh, tomorrow afternoon. Do I have a motion to adjourn? No, we're not adjourning. <laughs> we're continuing, that's yes. right, we're continuing. Okay, we'll do that motion tomorrow. That's correct. <laughs> okay, so we will all meet tomorrow afternoon again. Right. 5.30. Okay, thank you all very Everyone much. Everyone come on at five o'clock again. <laughs>